Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the October Eclipse Outlook. We're going to take a look at the eclipse on the 14th of October. That will be a Saturday, I do believe, and that is going to be a solar eclipse. And we'll take a look at the lunar eclipse that is happening on the 28th of October. Again, it's a Saturday. And I'm just mentioning that it's a Saturday because I've got both of those days marked in my acuity scheduler. I, at the start of the year, I mark off the eclipse days so that I don't do readings on those days. And I never have readings scheduled on Saturday or Sunday, so it's all good. <laughs> but I just wanted to let you know that they're both on Saturday this time, which is kind of handy because it's the kind of day that you can nominate to not do as much you know if you and I'll be going through the mini reports and I'm going to be sharing with you which signs need to be extra careful especially when it comes to things like travel okay for some of you it may not be the best idea you know to take a long trip or something like that and if it's the kind of thing that you have booked in and you have to go then go it should be fine but if it's the kind of thing where you can nominate you know what, let's do it on Sunday. Then might be a good idea to just do whatever it is on the Sunday. Well, anyway, let's take a look at the 14th of October solar eclipse. We're going to have a look at this for the collective. We'll take a look at the eclipse just generally as a whole. We're going to see, all right, what kind of energies do we have here? So we have a solar eclipse with the new moon part of the eclipse happening on the Ketu side. Okay, that's quite important. When we've got that new moon component happening on the Rahu side, then we really are looking at something where we could jump ahead in the future. But this is happening here with the Ketu side. So it's most likely that we'll be dealing with some past thing. And because that's happening on the Ketu side there with Libra, it could be to do with our past when it comes to relationships in particular. I have a note here, the last eclipse to happen, this is going to be the last eclipse to happen on this line. The next time we're going to have eclipses happen on the Aries Libra axis will be 18 years from now, which is 2041. Okay, so this is the last time we're going to have really big eclipse energy impacting. And in particular Libra, I am seeing that definitely for the 14th October solar eclipse, this is a big kind of hit to Libra, even Virgo, because Sun and Moon are actually in Chitra Nakshatra for this eclipse. And Chitra Nakshatra, of course, is a part of Virgo there. Uh, Chitra Nakshatra is lauded by Mars. Mars is also with Ketu in this instance and one of the things that that's showing me is that any battle that will be had at this time will actually be done skillfully. Okay, so if you are in some kind of great difficulty in a relationship or you're in some kind of situation where there's some kind of battle that's taking place there is an energy here of this battle being skillful. Okay, and one of the other reasons I say that is because Mercury will be close by. Mercury's in Virgo with the sun and the moon. Saturn is in Aquarius casting third aspect onto Rahu. And this is that humanitarian influence, that desire for equality, that thing of the people speaking up. The people, you know, we the people have had enough. You know, we do have that energy feeding into this eclipse. We've also got Jupiter in there with Rahu. And I do like that Jupiter's in here with Rahu. Jupiter is wisdom. So we've got the ingredient of wisdom in here. When we take a look at the eclipse path, the eclipse path is across the north well, across basically America and, and at the top of South America as well, I've got here. I'll, I'll put a picture up on the screen. You'll be able to see where this eclipse path is. So this eclipse really could be impacting 
the United States of America. I, I think the next one afterwards is really going to impact as well. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. And in terms of collectively, what things are we going to see? Well, we've got here top leaders can lose their position. But Mercury is with the sun in this instance. And Mercury lords Virgo. Mercury and, and Sun are there in Virgo. So we've got the house's Lord in there. And I think Mercury is going to provide some kind of stabilizing effect for leaders who are, say, for example, being attacked or lose their position at this time. Mercury is very stabilizing here. So that is a good energy there. If we take a look at the 14th October solar eclipse, to see what's going to happen for us personally. How are we each individually going to experience this? I will be covering this in the mini reports, but as a general note, we're having a look at Mars and Ketu in Libra. So we've got Rahu's Lord. Okay, so Rahu's in Aries and Rahu's lorded by Mars. Mars is back there with Ketu. Okay, so we've got Rahu Lord with Ketu. So we know that we are having to deal with the past. Okay, so the past is coming up in our lives. We have to deal with the past, with this eclipse. And it's happening in Libra. And Libra is all about relationships. Libra is all about committed relationships. It's about balance. It's about diplomacy. It's about justice. And I've got here, even though this is a solar eclipse, which is normally normally a solar eclipse, I tend to view them as being something future oriented. And of course, when you've got the new moon signature there, the, the sun and the moon, when that's there with Rahu, we are looking more at the future. But this is bringing us back to the past here because this is in with Ketu. So it's very much about handling our current relationships with skill, also handling relationships that come back into our life from the past with skill as well. And I've got here, it's about, so individually, it's about bringing skill, precision and wisdom to our relationships. There's a real relationship focus as a part of this eclipse here. And this can be the kind of energy where we potentially lose a relationship as well. Okay, but it, it's really interesting. When I look at this eclipse, I'm kind of seeing that if one is to lose a relationship at this time, you might feel okay. There's something about feeling okay here. And I've got written here, I'm not sensing anything emotional here. There's something about us becoming skillful and with Mercury even possibly calculating. I know calculating is not a great word. Some people think calculating is like being manipulative, but I'm using the word calculating just because I'm looking at Mercury and Mercury's there in Virgo. And this is that kind of uh, clinical numbers, practicality, let's get on with it type energy. So there is, there, there, there can be some changes to relationships. I have seen this happen personally in people's lives where an eclipse happens and literally someone gets eclipsed out of your life. And especially things like dating or you're not quite sure about someone or maybe there's a relationship you're trying to get out of. Sometimes some people are trying to get out of a relationship and they keep looking to the eclipse points to do it for them. And, you know, you, you're, you're still there, you know, and, and if you're still there, well, it's down to you. The universe can only do so much. You know, if your free will really tells you that you've got to move on from the person that you're with, for example. And I know how hard that can be. That can be really hard to figure out, do I stay? Do I go? If you're in a do I stay, do I go kind of situation, it, there is potential for this eclipse to just make it very clear that, you know, if, if you've been asking, is this the right person? And if you've been asking that for too long and you're not sure, then maybe something about this eclipse is going to make it particularly clear. 
we take a look at the 28th October lunar eclipse, let's have a look at that energy wise and for the collective. So because of the tripled conjunction that we have here in this particular eclipse, we've got Moon, Jupiter and Rahu conjunct in Aries. I have the note here, this one could be intense for America. Even though visually when we look at the line of this eclipse, America doesn't seem to be too much affected by this lunar eclipse, but even still because of that triple conjunction there, 28th October lunar eclipse could be intense for America in particular. The, another reason as to why this is so is because this eclipse is Kendra to United States Rahu Ketu axis. Okay, and when I've looked at the lordships of this eclipse, and especially when you look at the like the nakshatra lordships, there's a lot of back and forth between Rahu Ketu in this particular instance. So there's a lot of energy there, and then that's in Kendra, 90 degrees to USA's Rahu Ketu axis. So it could be intense over there in America. There's a full moon in Aries, Ashwini Nakshatra, and there's a Parivartana exchange happening between Venus and Sun during this eclipse. So collectively, when I was thinking about this earlier, I've got written here, this eclipse has the power to close out an individual's long-term career. And just as a side note, I yeah, we, we have seen that. I talked about this in my last most recent monthly. I'll put a link above if you haven't seen it. I talked about the English presenter, you know, and I actually just this evening, I was one of 80,000 viewers watching him on Rumble and that was really interesting. He interviewed Jimmy Dore and I thought that was a really good interview. So he is still going business as usual and that is, um, you know, happening. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite interesting that we do have these kind of in eclipses here as I've got written here that could close out an individual's long-term career or take them off the playing field in some way you know uh, that maybe they're not on the big stage you know they're on a smaller stage or something along those lines the other example I had of this was I think I can't remember exactly when this was but I remember covering it here on the channel and it was Imran Khan his career finished at the time of an eclipse and that was uh, yeah something I observed there. Another thing that I observed collectively as well a collective example is Harry and Meghan leaving the royal family I know it's quite trivial but uh, yeah they got eclipsed out of the royal family right that, that, that official letter or whatever that was I remember covering that on this channel as well these are two standout things that I remember the other thing we could have collectively is sudden changes in political direction, something taking like a, a 180 degree, you know, total switch, something just switches, just completely switches, uh, political direction totally switches, something along those lines that, you know, or, or at a 90 degree angle, you know, we thought we were going this way, but we're actually going this way, some, something like that could happen at this time as well collectively. What about personally? So the 28th October lunar eclipse from a personal standpoint. Well this one really is pure Aries Libra energy. Okay all the planets are involved they're just Aries Libra. Libra. We have no Virgo this time. So this is pure energy of the individual versus the other. Okay, we've got Rahu there in Aries. Rahu wants to be more of an individual. We've got Ketu there in Libra, in the house of the other. So consideration over the last year and a half, we're saying goodbye to this energy. By the way, I am going to do a Rahu Ketu shift video that is next on my list. Hopefully I can get that done fingers crossed this week I don't let's see uh, but that I'm on it <laughs> so that's coming but yeah I mean we're saying goodbye to this to this energy now and I have the note here this is this this is a chance to lose old versions of you 
And this concept of losing old versions of you, I really like this concept. I'm, I'm kind of quoting from the work of Kyle Cease. I'll put his name on the screen. Check him out. He's an absolutely brilliant coach. Sometimes I recommend him to clients of mine, uh, you know, where if he's got lots of videos on something that I haven't particularly made videos on, I really want to make more coaching style videos. I will be hopefully doing that soon. But if, you know, if, if there's anything that I find of his that's really great, I will refer uh, his work over to you. And when you step back and you take a look at the work of Kyle Cease, he's very often talking about an old version of you that is just falling away so that this brand new version of you can step forward. This is a really classic thing in his approach and I just love it. And with this eclipse, what we have the potential to do personally is that old versions of us, they're eclipsed out, you know, and we, this concept of we're done. I've done the work, I've done the lessons, I've learnt, I, I know not to, you know, go down that road again or try this again. Or, and, and especially when it comes to relationships, especially when it comes to relationships with other people, especially close partnerships in particular. That could be business, that could be love. Okay, but there's this thing of you losing old versions of you. Also, you having compassion for old versions of you. You having new levels of forgiveness for old versions of you. You understanding why you did things the way you did them and uh, just things becoming clear, things making sense. You being grateful to old versions of you that, you know, okay, that relationship didn't work out, but I'm glad I was in it because I learned this, this and this. I think, you know, we're closing off some pretty big cycles here when it comes to who we are as individuals and who we are when we're in relationships. We're really closing out some big cycles and patterns here. It's very interesting. And once we've done this, we're going to enter, you know, Rahu in Pisces. When I make that video, I'm excited to make that one. And I've been thinking about it over the last few days. Rahu in Pisces is going to be different. Okay, we're going to be working with Jupiter and Mercury. We've been working with Venus and Mars over the last year and a half, but now we're going to be working with Jupiter and Mercury. That is going to be new. <laughs> and we need some new energy uh, on the planet. And I have the note here, you will want to know who you are for this, for this next shift that's coming at the end of November. And I've also got the note, you have just a short time left if you are experimenting with who you are. So that's Rahu in Aries. It's going to end. It's coming to an end, guys, end of uh, November. And this concept of experimenting with who you are, this is something that I work with my clients a lot. This is something I really like in the coaching work I do. I, and this is reflected in my chart because I've got a Rahu heavy chart. <laughs> I've got a lot of planets with Rahu. And... I really like this concept of experimenting with who you are. So try something new. You know, be different. Carry a different energy. Hold a different vibration. You know, ask yourself, if I was an abundant person, how would I behave? Or if I was a loving person, what would I do in this situation? But it's always experimenting with who and what you are. And that's very Rahu. In Rahu energy, you can experiment with who you are. Now you go back to Ketu, your comfort zone to relax <laughs> and to replenish. So with Rahu and Aries, we've got a short time left of that and you can experiment. Experiment with ways of being, experiment with, you know, and even things like, um, you know, just kind of, and this, this is gonna sound odd. This is the kind of stuff that comes up in pick a card but one of the things is like secretly being loving you know it's like it's, with some people you have to stick up for yourself you have to be angry you have to tell them off you have to tell them no go away and this or that all right you have to be firm but then secretly be loving towards them you know without anyone knowing you know things like that how crazy is that who does that well maybe you're gonna experiment with that and you're gonna get some good results with it um, i also have the note here if you have been chronically single that time is coming to a close for many people as well. We've had Ketu, a suppression energy going across Libra. And this has meant that perhaps 
if you're in a committed relationship, maybe you've lost your spark or you're bored or, you know, there's, there's no excitement there. Uh, and we're going to have a shift there. So that's, I think it's going to be a positive shift uh, because Rahu's going to go into Pisces. And that could really spice things up for relationships that say, for example, if it's gone flat or there's not much going on or, you know, that could be a thing. So if you're in a committed partnership, marriage, any of that, and it's been flat and lifeless, well, you know, that don't worry, that's going to come to a close. Uh, if you've been chronically single, haven't been meeting anyone, then that time might come to a close as well. And you might start getting out, you might start meeting people again. So guys, I think we're going to take a look at all the signs. Those of you who like to watch the whole thing, join me on this ride. We're going to take a look at all the different signs and I'm just going to check the time. I think we're okay. I think we're good. All right. Well, let's begin. So Aries, Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Aries, Ascendant. Aries moon or Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 14th of October we have a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your sixth and seventh houses. So this could impact your work in the world, what you do for a living. Uh, this could also impact a relationship with your spouse as well. But any changes that you experience here, you actually will handle them with skill and with wisdom. Okay. And perhaps a detached compassion as well. This isn't particularly a time to be sentimental. And if some relationship has to leave your life, then energetically let it go. And there is such a thing as letting it go while you are still physically there. Okay, so perhaps it's a job situation or perhaps it is the person that you're in a committed relationship with. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of the times you're, you're still in that job or you're still in the house with the person you're married to, but, you know, it, it's going to change. Um, so it could be that at this time it, it just becomes really obvious but maybe, say for example, you're not able to physically leave for a year or two or, or however long that is. Okay, so... But there's something about the energy here which is just going to smooth things over if, if you're in that kind of situation and just empower you, you know, to be okay. So I'm not seeing this 14th... October solar eclipse as being a bad one at all. I'm seeing it as being something where energetically you'll be able to let something go and everything's going to be okay. You know you're going to be fine at a deep level. There's a kind of strategic intelligence and wisdom that's at play that you'll be able to tune into and tap into at this time. On the 28th of October there's a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your first house. Well, this is all about you, Aries. This is a big one. So this is a good time to reflect on all the experiments you've done on who you are since March 2022. And it's a good time for you to reflect on how you've been showing up in the world since March 2022. Okay, because we're going to say goodbye to this energy. You, I've got here, and you have until 28 November as I was saying, you have here until 28 November 2022 to experiment with who you are. Okay, so if you're still in that experimental phase and in order to help with the definition of who you are, because we are looking at Aries, we're looking at identity here. So if you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I want to show up in the world? And if there's something about that where you're getting bogged down or it's getting complicated or whatever, then go more abstract, go up a level and simplify, make it simpler. So, you know, when I, when I look at my purpose in the world and what it is that I'm doing, I could get bogged down in, into the astrological details or I could just say, well, I'm here to serve, you know, just that one word, serve, or 
my purpose and what I what I am about or what I want to be about is I want to be about just bringing love to the world or I want to you know I've got a gift for comedy I can make people laugh you know maybe maybe you're an accountant but maybe you're you're you've got a great sense of humor and and you know wherever you go you make people laugh or something like that your gift and what it is that you uniquely bring to the world will be something very simple and basic like that so don't get bogged down in in the details of life go up a level and choose one word that you want to be about and show up as that aries I hope you have a good eclipse. Now, these these are both, uh, I hope you have a good eclipse. Gosh, I don't know if it is. Can people have good eclipses? Let me think about that. Do you know, I have been invigorated and enlivened by some eclipses. Yeah, I have felt good after some eclipses, now that I observe them uh, with a lot of detail. Uh, Yeah, some eclipses can be invigorating and really good. Both of them are happening on a Saturday. And I just want to say to all signs that just take care, all right? If you're traveling somewhere, if you're going somewhere, you know don't be in a rush and if you're not feeling it don't go use your intuition all that kind of thing Aries Uh, but I'm I'm wishing you well take care Aries and we are now going to welcome Taurus Taurus welcome thank you so much for joining this is a Taurus ascendant Taurus moon or Taurus sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so now on the 14th of October we have a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your fifth and sixth houses so this eclipse could be connected with work relationships could be connected with your creativity could be connected to your relationships with your children could also be romance if you're young and single could also be to do with your studies as well if you're very young so yeah that's that's the thing there now some aspect of relationships in these areas this is work relationships relationship with children or if you're dating some aspect of these relationships might complete or finish at this time and this could be the time to say goodbye to an old version of you this could also be the time to say goodbye if you've got any old heartbroken versions of you if 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 you know there were relationships that didn't work out or or things like that or question marks or this really can be a time where you can feel complete about everything that's been in your past okay and that is to do with your heart as well so so look out for that and see if that is going to be the case but there's really nice energy here for you to move forward in whatever way you need to now on the 28th of october there is a lunar eclipse happening in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra in your 12th house. So perhaps since March 2022, you've been experimenting with who you are spiritually. Perhaps you've grown a lot spiritually. I do know a few Taurians who are uh, Taurus moon people who, yeah, they have been growing spiritually, my goodness. So that could be you, Taurus. So perhaps you've really grown a lot in like spiritually, you know, and we're talking like, sp- like spiritually, not, um, not nothing to do with religion. Ninth house, I always think is religion and gurus and learning and intellectually and spiritually is the mind can't comprehend it, you know, and, and so you'll notice things go up like your intuition your ability for telepathy uh, these these things that you know your access to broader intelligence okay your, that that access might be bigger so it's kind of like you, maybe you were on a dial-up connection now you got broadband okay something along those lines it's a great time to look back and recognize how far you've come and how you've changed and grown spiritually Taurus and definitely a really great time for journaling for uh, and if you have like an oracle deck or a tarot deck or something like that you could even sit with that and just ask it questions I did that a couple of nights ago I often don't do that for myself I hardly ever do that for myself but I actually had quite a productive evening I think it was on Sunday I thought I'm gonna ask the cards I got some good answers I was really happy actually so and that can be 
you can do that in conjunction with journaling. It's actually really powerful. Taurus, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini, Ascendant Gemini Moon or Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse happening in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra in your fourth and fifth houses. So this eclipse is connected with home, mother, your creativity, your relationship with your children, could be to do with romance if you're dating, could be to do with your studies as well, if you're a student. Some aspects of the relationships that you have in these areas could be completing at this time. And simultaneously, it's quite amazing, you, you might be closing something out, but you're opening something brand new. So there is a new chapter being opened in all of these areas as well might be too soon to know what it is but a new chapter will definitely be opened now on the 28th of october there's a lunar eclipse in aries ashwini nakshatra happening in your 11th house so something long-standing could come to a close regarding big finances investments how you bring in wealth something could come full circle in relationships with friends or older siblings and this is a great time to reflect on whether you're more independent since March 2022 and how you'd like to be more independent going forward. What is that concept of independence for you? And you know, it's really interesting. Sometimes our notion of independence and independence, that changes across a lifetime. You know, sometimes we're re we've really got this energy where we're breaking free and so equally, sometimes we're going back to something as well. So yeah, where are you with some of these things? That would be interesting to take a look at. Gemini, I'm going to wish you well. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon or Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse happening in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra in your third and fourth houses. So this is connected in with siblings, friends, your groups that you belong to or hobbies that you do, or you know if there's a group that you go to regularly or something like that. This could be to do with relationship with mother. This could also be to do with relationship with self, relationship with your own confidence, how you feel about yourself as well. Now there could be some cycles completing at this time in relation to those areas, so siblings, friends, relationship with mothers. It could be some dynamics or something completes or, you know, and this, this could be a thing where certain friends that you don't click with or connect with so much anymore, maybe they're going to you're going to have some time out from them or you don't really connect with them as much. It's a possibility here. Something about you just know it's time that, yeah, I can't hang out with those people. <laughs> now, the other thing is that you're simultaneously opening a new chapter in all of these areas. Okay, so... And another thing about this is that if there are relationship changes, just let them go. But if a change happens in relationship, and I feel like this is the kind of energy where it will be easier to let things go because there's not much sentimental or emotional energy here in this eclipse. It's kind of quite practical and strategic and logical and, you know, Mercury and Mars are involved. So, yeah. Now on the 28th of October, we've got a lunar eclipse happening in Aries, Ashwini Nakshatra, happening in your 10th house. So you might be completing something in regards to your work at this time. A major project might close. You may even feel that it's time to leave a workplace. And, you know, I mean, you might still be there for a while, but maybe emotionally you check out of there. You're just like, yeah, I, I, I have to look for another place, you know. Now, regarding your work, you would have seen that you've grown in maturity uh, work-wise since March 2022. If you look back to March 2022 
and look back over all that time, you would have matured and grown when it comes to your work. And this should be good. You should be able to look back and see how far you've come since then. You would have taken a bit of a journey and you would have grown quite a bit. So definitely stop and take a look and see that you've done well. You've done a lot, Cancer. You've been working really hard and I'm really hoping that, you know, rewards come through. Things, things will change. They always do. So Cancer, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Leo, Ascendant, Leo, Moon or Leo, Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now on the 14th of October, we've got a solar eclipse happening in Virgo, Chitra Nakshatra in your second and third houses. So something could change in your family. Something could change in your savings or your big wealth or how you do money. Something also to do with short distance travel. You might be traveling at this time. Now, if you are traveling at this time, Leo, please do take extra care. Okay, build in buffer time. Don't be in a rush if you're traveling on the 14th. If you can switch the day, I mean, you know, this is a Saturday, so maybe you can switch it to Sunday. Maybe. If you can, great. If you can't, don't worry. Still go, but definitely take care if you're traveling. Take care with family relationships. Take time out if things are tense in your family right now. If family relations are strained or difficult, this might be a kind of day you, you might want to be a bit more on your own uh, or not interact with other people too much. Now on the 28th of October, we've got a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. So again, if you're traveling, take care. This is a big, big one. I, I've personally seen this. Uh, I think it was one of the eclipses I was in Sydney for. This was like maybe a year or two ago. And I was due to go to the beach that day. And somehow I woke up and I was really sick. I couldn't go anywhere. And my neighbor, she did go. And, oh God, it was so tragic. I was so sad. She ended up in a car accident and she's okay now. She's traveling and, and thankfully like, but she had to, um, she had some pretty big surgeries on her legs. And it was, I mean, yeah, that was, that was really bad. It happened exactly on the eclipse day. So that's why I'm kind of, yeah, I, I, I do worry a little bit on eclipse days. I just, I don't worry too much. If I have to go out, I'll go out, you know, if I, if, because I just do life naturally and I believe that I'm guided and protected. So there's a lot of other spiritual things you can do, you know. So we're not always at the mercy of planets all the time. But like if you've got the ability to switch the day, might as well do that, you know, and if it's easy to do. But that's why I uh, now, now I always give the little bit of warning about take care when traveling because I've seen it happen so that that one time, and then yeah I have also other seen seen other difficult things happen with with eclipse energies yeah personally so uh, but anyway uh, it's a great time Leo for you actually when we're we're looking at this twenty eighth October lunar eclipse because this is a full moon so you're reflecting on something. As well so hopefully you're taking care while you travel all right so you're gonna do that good but now let's look back and reflect on what you've learned really since March 2022 okay because we're reflecting on the whole time that Rahu has been there in Aries and you would have learned a lot okay and whatever it is that you've learned since March 2022 you might well be teaching that going forward Okay, and you might be a professional teacher, but there's you would have learned a lot from March 22 to now. And there'll be something within all of that that you're going to teach later in life. So definitely do a review. Have a think back to March 2022. What was it that I was doing? How have I grown? How have I developed? What am I taking forward? Leo, I'm wishing you well. Stay safe. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're all good. Okay, Virgo, Virgo ascendant, Virgo moon or Virgo sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. 
So on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your first and second houses. Virgo, this one's all about you. This is big. Uh, this, this is your eclipse. Now, because this is happening first, I'm going to say definitely take care of your physical body. Take care if you are traveling at this time. Okay, if you have to travel for some reason, don't be in a rush. Really build in buffer time, take care. It's, if it's the kind of thing that's easy to switch to Sunday, okay, because this is happening on a Saturday, so you could switch the thing to Sunday. If you can do that, might, that might be an option. Now, this is also happening in your second house, so things could be changing in your family or something could be changing with your big savings or your wealth or something like that. If things are tense with the family, then you might want to take some time out from them. Okay, this, this could be an eclipse where you might just want to be on your own a little bit more. Uh, yeah, so things could be intense there with the family on the 14th of October. Now on the 28th of October, we've got a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your eighth house. Now this one is, yeah, I've got some interesting notes here. So now not every, this is not going to apply to everybody, but this will apply to some people, but it's worth mentioning. I've got here, if you are a little bit accident prone or you have family members that are accident prone, then make sure everybody takes extra care at this time. I know someone who, this person just is accident prone, okay, they've got three planets there in the eighth house and this person, even when they're like trying to put milk in the tea and stuff like that, they always spill stuff and like this person is just very accident prone. Uh, so you might find if someone's got really a heavy eighth house in your family, and this could, this might not be you, this might be a family member, okay, but there's something about accident prone, just take care. That's all. And I'm not seeing any major thing or any bad thing. I'm not seeing any bad thing. But there's just something about take extra care at this time. And good time to go easy with family members. As I say, like it could be just spilling a bit of milk. You know, I mean, that's as much as I'm seeing here. I'm not seeing any bad things. But uh, yeah, I, this just a little note about accident prone and take extra care. Now, definitely go easy with family members. Yeah, that is still running across here into the 28th. Uh, of course, that's the 8th house, yes. Easy, go easy with family members or in-laws or any of that. And now what you can do personally as a self-development, self-improvement exercise that would be really good at this time is you can look back since March 2022 and you can see how much you've grown and you can see how your family has grown and changed over this time. And I have seen incredible things in this regard. I've seen, because March 2022, if you remember, I mean, wasn't that a crazy time? And we had families falling apart. We had families couldn't agree with, you know, do you take the J-A-B thing or do you not or do you do this or do you do that? I saw families sort of have challenges with that. Equally, I'm seeing that people all coming together. I had some friends of mine um, who didn't agree with me. They were like, oh, you should take it. What's wrong with you? And they didn't want to see me. And you know what's really interesting? They want to see me now and they're okay. They don't mind. They're like, hey, I understand you. And you had some valid reasons for how you thought and, and things like that. So, you know, this is a time where People are coming together again. People, people are changing. People who were divided in March 2022, they're now coming together. And I'm seeing that with my, yeah, with my, with my friends who, you know, I was pretty lucky. Uh, people didn't mind my decision, or whatever my decision was, uh, which was to not take the stuff. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter because we're all one. You know, like we're all one at the end of the day. This is what I keep thinking. Um, so I, I didn't mind what, what people decided, but I did have some friends who did mind that I didn't go down that road. But they, you know, they come back in. They say, hey, I want to see you. Uh, I've got here, this is a great time for reflection regarding your place in the family and how they fit with you and how you fit with them. What have the changes been? And look, if you're still apart from your family or it still hasn't resolved, 
I'm telling you there will be another transit, there will be another eclipse, there will be another something that will bring you all together again. What, with life, what I've discovered so much over the course of studying astrology especially is that we have this thing of going apart and we have this thing of coming together and we go apart and we come together and we go apart and we come together. It's all very natural. So wherever you are with that, maybe you're out here, maybe you're coming back together, I don't know, but it's all okay and, and there are forces that will bring you back, there are forces that will take you apart. Wherever you are with that, just know that you're going to be fine. And I really do get a sense with this eclipse that a lot of people are going to be fine. It's not an emotional eclipse, this one. It's quite... Um, yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of quite dry and uh, non-emotional is, is what I'm seeing. It's quite functional or practical somehow. Anyway, Virgo, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I'm wishing you well. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. I think we're okay. Uh, now, on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse in Virgo, Chitra Nakshatra, happening in your 12th and 1st houses. So if you're traveling at this time, please do take care. You could be traveling with that 12th house energy there and it would be advisable to take care. Build in buffer time. Don't be in a rush. You know, uh, and if it's the kind of thing that this is happening on a Saturday, so if you can postpone it, maybe everybody gets together on the Sunday and that's easy. If that's the case, you might want to do that. Um, You've got really interesting energy here, Libra, I must say. I've got here, keep a dream diary at this time because you could be extra psychic at this time. Definitely keep a dream diary. I have heard of the most incredible, in fact, I had a pretty incredible dream one time. Uh, yeah, I did. I, I had a quite a psychic dream. Uh, this was many, many years ago and I was following the eclipses like very closely. I can't remember, was it? Might have been 2010, 2011, I can't remember. But basically, someone I know, their house flooded. And I had a dream that I didn't have the dream that that person's house flooded, but I had a dream that when I opened my blinds, I could only see the ocean. And I remember telling that to this person. Um, yeah, it was all very significant. I could go into it. It's a long story. It's not very exciting. But just watch your dreams is what I'm saying. Like you could have some very amazing dreams. There are other things that happened in that dream. Like someone delivered a teddy bear. And anyway, it turns out that the description of that teddy bear exactly matched. So this person whose house flooded has that exact teddy bear. And I didn't know. And yeah there were there were certain things that were just kind of bizarre very weird that was the only one time that ever happened in my life though so i don't normally have psychic dreams but you know, once every now and then it can happen uh although I, you know, I do have weird dreams anyway uh this could be a time yes so you've got a lot of interesting energies here as i was saying you've got a lot of interesting energies here i've also got here um this could be a time where you need to stand up for yourself so that's also interesting as well. Uh, and I've got here, let go of, if, if there's a relationship that is no longer, it's, you know, it's not working or let it go. Just let it go. And this is not a time to be sentimental. This is just a time to let go. And that's going to be good, okay, at this time. Now on the 28th of October, there is a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your seventh house. So this is a really good time to review the relationships you've had since March 2022. And here is the question that I have for you, Libra. Have you been able to be fully yourself in your relationships over this time? And celebrate where you have done this. Celebrate the times where you were fully yourself in relationships since March 2022. And this has been a tough time in relationships, just generally, because there's been a lot going on. People have different ideas, different opinions. And that's Rahu in Aries, Rahu in a fire sign. It has been a time of people being very 
individually opinionated about lots of different issues. And because of people's opinions, strong opinions on things, a lot of people have fallen out with each other. And we are seeing that people are coming back together again, but it could well be that there were times where your unique opinion upset someone else or you couldn't keep being friends with someone or, or whatever. I've got here, recognize that the lesson you've been learning over these past many months, well, one of the lessons, anyway, there will be many lessons you've been learning, but recognize that one of the lessons you've been learning over these past many months is that you're allowed to be you. Isn't that radical? But I'm sure many of you will agree with that, that like one big lesson you've been learning is that you're allowed to be you and you should be able to be you, you know, and it shouldn't uh, upset anyone else. But if it does, well, they're allowed to be them and they're allowed to be upset and they're allowed to, you know, maybe you have different parts for a little while, but eventually everybody always come back together again. You know, the curtain closes and we're all one again. So that's what I believe. So what's been really important is that you know that you're allowed to be you. And I've got here not only that, but you will cheat the world of the truth if you are not your true self. It's really important that you are your true self, you know, because that's what the world wants from you. That's why you incarnated. You incarnated to be you and to give that uniqueness to the world. Libra, this has been quite a profound time. I think you're going to have, I think of everybody actually, you've got a really, yeah, you do, you're a Libra. Aries and Libra are going to have the most interesting eclipse time. Uh, it's huge for you, you guys, and Virgo as well this time. So I'm wishing you well, Libra. This could be quite significant for you. Keep a dream diary, do some journaling, write it all out, let go of the old selves. You're opening some new chapters here. It, it is really exciting. So take care, Libra. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Scorpio. Ascendant, Scorpio, Sun, or Scorpio, Moon, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse happening in Virgo, Chitra, Nakshatra. This is in your 11th and 12th houses. So if you're traveling at this time, Scorpio, please do take extra care. That's really important. I'm telling everybody who might be traveling, take extra care, build in buffer time. Don't rush. You know, and if you can switch your event to Sunday, that might be an idea. Now, areas impacted include your intimate partner, your siblings, your network circles, your friends. Okay, and very much who you are spiritually. These are all the areas that are going to be impacted by this 14th October solar eclipse. It could be some things from your past, especially connected with partners, siblings, friends. Some past thing could come up that you have to face or deal with again. Now, the other thing is, I think some of you have been working very hard. Uh, and perhaps some of you haven't had a holiday since March 2022. So know that if that's the case, this will change when Rahu Ketu shifts. And perhaps it will be easier for you to take a little holiday or something like that. Now on the 28th of October, there is a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your sixth house. So this is a great time to review your work in the world since March 2022. You've probably been working really hard, earning, creating stability in your life. Now, if that hasn't been happening, everything I just said there is really dependent on other factors in your chart. Okay, so it is possible that perhaps you haven't been working or it's been hard to get a job or that, that is a possibility too. But most likely for a lot of people here, you've just been working hard. Okay, and you've been earning and creating stability. That's going to be quite typical, but you could be a Scorpio depending on other factors in your chart where that's not the case. But regardless of, of that, the main point is celebrate how far you've come since March 2022 when it comes to your work in the world. Okay, even if you've had to have breaks here because you are Scorpio and when there's a lot of Scorpio energy in the chart, 
there can be breaks, natural breaks will appear in career. It's hard to maintain just a constant, you know, working all the time thing when you've got a lot of Scorpio energy. I totally understand that. But still look look back and since March 2022, perhaps if there have been gaps in your career or your work, maybe you've been reinventing yourself. Maybe that's given you the opportunity to rethink. Maybe, you know, it, it's been a good thing. The other thing is that if at this time some work gets eclipsed out, some people, there can be job losses with an eclipse. And I've got here, if there is some kind of job or something that gets eclipsed, please don't worry because there will be new transits that will bring new work your way. Okay, and I am seeing that with my clients. Some of my clients are, you know, they're in difficult spots financially, but, you know, new transits, new things, are bringing new energies their way as well. We've got some new shifts coming up. Perhaps the Rahu Ketu shift uh, that's going to come up is going to be good for you. And remember, you can look at that definitely from at least Ascendant and Moon. So do check your other signs as well. Scorpio, I'm wishing you well. Take care. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius welcome. So this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 14th of October we have a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your 10th and 11th houses. So this could be impacting your work, your career, it could be impacting older siblings, colleagues and friends as well. Now if there is a job loss at this time it is possible uh, don't worry, new transits will bring new work to you. We do have a new shift. The Rahu Ketu axis is going to shift end of November. So please don't worry. And you know, we're going to have a new year starting next year. It's going to be a number eight year. We're currently in a seven year. So you know, an eight year is going to bring new energy as well. Uh, now this eclipse for you, Sagittarius, it could provide a jolt to your investments. But if you're invested for the long term, then you're going to be fine. Now on the 28th of October there is a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your fifth house. So if you look back over the past year and a half, so since about March 2022, you might have been reinventing who you are. And when it comes to how you show up in romantic relationships, perhaps you've been experimental there maybe how you show up with your kids or something to do with your creativity. Perhaps since March 2022 in these areas, so romance, your kids or your creative projects, in these areas maybe you've been reinventing yourself, experimenting, trying new things. There might have been a lot of growth and evolution in all of these areas. So reflect on how you've done and celebrate where you were your full self. Celebrate where you expressed yourself to the full. Or I've got here where you gave yourself completely. Okay, that was a job well done. So Sagittarius, I'm wishing you well. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now on the 14th of October, there is a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your 9th and 10th houses. So if you are traveling at this time, please take extra care. Okay, build in buffer time, uh, don't rush, you know, and if you can, if let's say, for example, you go and have lunch with friends on the Saturday, but let's say it's really easy to shift that to Sunday. You might want to do that. Uh, now... I've also got here, you might come up against authority conflicts in relationships. Okay, and that, that is a possibility here. Authority conflicts are in a lot of relationships, not just uh, relationships with authority. You know, the, the, the authority conflicts are, you know, there'll be any kind of relationship, but it's like somebody's more powerful or somebody's, higher up or you know all that kind of narcissist empath ranking and this and that all that kind of stuff you know someone has more authority than you got here let go 
And this isn't a time to be sentimental. This is a time to be wise and skillful in relationships. And even kind of methodical, practical, not emotional. There's something that's not emotional here in this eclipse is what I'm sensing. I'm sensing this is a real time to be skillful. I keep coming up to that word skillful because we've got Mercury in Virgo at this time. Now your relationship with committed partner could be quite tough at this time. I know that's been a bit of an ongoing thing uh, for, for some, some of my Capricorn people. Um, yeah, so I've got here, you know, take care in, in that relationship with committed partner. I've got here equally, some dynamic can come to an end, either at home or in your partnership. Okay, and it's like, if the energy shifts and you feel a release, great and you know th this can be the kind of thing Capricorn where and I do have a few clients who are in this kind of situation where they're in a relationship and they know that this is not my partner but you know I you know I've, I've been with this partner for 10 years but I can't do another 10 you know some of you are in that situation where you know that um, so what I'm saying to people with this Eclipse is that, you know, there can be an ending of a relationship or a relationship dynamic or pattern. And you might need to still stay in that place physically with the person, okay? Because, you know, even though you know you can't keep going, you still physically have to be there. And I do think that this is the kind of eclipse that will, that can help you to just kind of, you, you withdraw your energy. Maybe it was out here, but you withdraw your energy here. And within here, you'll find that you're more happy, okay? When your energy's out a bit more, and I don't know how to explain this, but yeah, I, I recently did some exercises where I kind of um, was able to visualize things. And anyway, one of the things I visualized was, oh wow, when I bring my energy closer back to me, I'm okay, I'm all right in here. And yeah, it's a smaller space, but I'm actually really happy in here. You know, it's something like this. Uh, because yeah, it's sometimes in relationships, we just need to um, withdraw our energy a bit and be happy on our own. Sometimes that, that is gonna be the thing. Uh, now on the 28th of October, there is a lunar eclipse in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your fourth house. So if you look back over the past year and a half, so since March 2022, look at how Rahu has been reshaping your home life. Okay, and I've got here, you would have learned many lessons about being you at home. How do you be more you at home? And see, that is that thing of with Rahu in Aries, we're wanting to unfurl, we're wanting to expand. But you doing that, if you're in a, in a home situation where that somebody doesn't like that or yeah then you've kind of got to find your limit maybe you can't expand too much maybe you have to bring your energy here to be happy you know um so i think i think you would have learned a lot of lessons about expansion and oh actually no i can't expand too much you know me being too happy might be offensive to someone or, or something along those lines um you would have learned a lot of lessons about where to be and how to be and um yeah i've got here you are expanding emotionally you don't want to be stuffed down anymore rahu in pisces will be much better for you i do think rahu in pisces will be a lot better for you we will talk about that capricorn uh when we get into that i'm, I'm due to record that video very soon so we'll talk about it but i am wishing you well and i mean work with these energies work out where where can you be happy and sometimes we have to withdraw our energy but if we're happier and having a higher quality experience within a smaller place energetically then that is the thing to do uh, sometimes yeah we can't always expand it's it it can be difficult capricorn i totally understand i'm wishing you well take care capricorn you're doing great Okay, it's not easy. It's really not easy right now. I know lots of signs of finding it difficult. 
and they're not even in Sari Sati. You are. So take care, Capricorn. Wishing you well. All right. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant. Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your 8th and 9th houses. Now, definitely take extra care if you are traveling. All right. And the other thing is you could be a little bit more accident prone at this time. I had to say this to another sign earlier, this thing about being accident prone. Yeah, it's an odd one. Um, I know someone who is very accident prone and yeah, we always have to, to take care with this, with this family member uh, of mine who is accident prone. And it's a thing. It's a thing. You'll, you'll know if your family member is accident prone. If they've got a lot of Scorpio energy or eighth house energy, then they're going to be accident prone. <laughs> Maybe. They might be. I don't know. They might not be. Um, I've got here the note. I, I ask any accident prone family members to take care. I'm not seeing any bad thing at all. Like uh, this family member of mine who is accident prone, he always spills the milk when he's making tea, stuff like that. I'm not seeing any bad thing, but I'm just saying take care. You know, it's an eclipse. Uh, now, there could be authority conflicts in relationships at this time. Okay, relationships where, you know, there, there isn't equality. You're not meeting on an equal footing. There's for some reason they're above you, their ego is really big and you have to shrink in order to be with them and all that kind of stuff, you know, a bit of narcissist empath type thing. Yeah, I mean, there could be some of that or, or, or the, the, the other way around. I don't know. But uh, some authority conflicts in relationships could be highlighted at this time. The note here, go with the flow. Ideally, let go in the short term. This might be a situation where you just have to let go. You just, you, you can't be the winner here. Uh, and I've got the note here, you will have a chance to pick up what you want to do later or how you want to be. You'll have the chance to do that later. This might be the thing where you, okay, let them have their way type thing. Could be. Just observe, see how that is. Uh, now, on the 28th of October, there is a lunar eclipse happening in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra in your third house. So if you look back over the past year and a half since March 2022, look specifically at how much more confident you are now. Aquarius, you might discover that you're actually a lot more confident than you were before. You might be more courageous than you were before. Perhaps, you know, and this you might see this in the area of your friends. You might be able to say no a lot more easily, you know. Uh, and I've got here, what have you done since March 2022 to make more friends or to grow or to learn more? Maybe you've, you know, yeah, something to do with confidence, courage. Maybe you've had the courage and confidence to say no to a whole bunch of friends. And that's going to create space for a whole bunch of new friends, more appropriate people to come into your life. I've got here your courage, the courage that you've picked up since March 2022. You're going to use that in the next Rahu key to transit. You're going to use that to make more money. So Aquarius, I'm excited for that because I do think that it's important for you to make some more money. Those of you who are in your mid phase of Sadi Sati, so the Aquarius moons, hang in there. Okay, just keep yeah there is this thing of keep going with this flow keep going with the flow i'm actually it's actually good that these eclipses are not emotional okay because if you're an aquarius moon you might be going through some really uh difficult times emotional stuff i've got i know i have a couple of aquarius moons who are yeah i mean god they're really going through some tough stuff um and it's emotional but the good thing is that these eclipses are not emotional and i think they're going to bring some dynamics and things to an end it's just going to free up energy you're just going to feel easier you know and and that's really the goal here you are going to have to go with the flow of these times it is tough times uh, at the moment aquarius i'm wishing you well take care and we are now going to welcome pisces pisces welcome thank you so much for joining i'm just checking the time we're fine Pisces. All right, let's take a look. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So on the 14th of October, we have a solar eclipse in Virgo Chitra Nakshatra happening in your seventh and eighth houses. So now if you are traveling at this time, 
please do take extra care okay this is the kind of thing where you want to build in more buffer time or you know uh, maybe I mean look this is happening on a Saturday so if it's something you're meeting friends for lunch on Saturday maybe you might want to do it on the Sunday if it's easy to switch you might do that something like that so you know this could be that kind of thing um, the other thing is that I would also say just just take extra care people could be a little bit more accident prone if you have any accident prone family members oh, then let, tell them to take a little bit more care I know I have one he's got three planets in the eighth house you know uh, you can tell if someone's a bit accident prone they might have a lot of um, energy in eighth house or in Scorpio so you just want to know about that or, or look into that you might be able to help a family member at this time I've got here a dynamic or pattern or cycle could close out in your relationship with a committed partner or with family or with in-laws at this time and I've got here allow this to happen because there is something new just underneath okay and this is something that I've been looking at with houses 6, 8 and 12 the Dishtana houses these are the most challenging houses 6, 8 and 12 they're very challenging they're very difficult but they're full of illusions okay and when you see the illusion for what it is when you really see it when you really see that this is an illusion one of the things that will go away is fear you want the fear will go I think one of the things we're afraid of with yeah when there's an illusion there's all this fear that comes but when you see it or you see through it one of the first things that goes is fear okay and so fear will go and the other thing is that you will access a new level of power right and this is something that I am going to be putting hopefully into a video one of these days I just need to find the time but I have this whole theory around the incredible amount of power that sits just beneath illusion and it's fear so it's like you, it, the fear I think fear is there when you are approaching an illusion we're afraid you know but then when you have the understanding and the deep awareness and that spiritual work spiritual work will get you that spiritual work will get you that deep awareness and you see through stuff you see through it as I was saying you just see through stuff and the, and the fear vanishes and then and you're left seeing that illusion for what it is which is not uh, anything that that bad you know um, and then there's a whole new level of power that's available to you okay now on the 28th of October there is a lunar eclipse happening in Aries Ashwini Nakshatra happening in your second house so if you look back over the past year and a half since March 2022 look at how you've grown your wealth over that time and you would have grown some wealth across that time because you had Saturn in a much better place Saturn would have been helping you to build wealth and money and all that kind of thing now Saturn is not in such a great position for that uh, but you would have grown your wealth possibly across 2020 to 2023 but if we're looking back at March 2022 so we're looking at second house that's why I was saying to look at money we're also looking at family relationships here as well so I've got here look at how you were an individual within your family unit and I've got the question here did you find it hard to be your full self or did you give your full self to your family how did that go and sometimes I mean we've been through a really tough time here March 2022 to now we've had a lot of families fall apart during this time and people are starting to come together again you know and we've had controversial issues where people have had different beliefs about things and people have fallen out and but people are coming back together now some people aren't some people are not coming back together it's going to take more time but have a look at if you found it hard to be your full self 
or did you give your full self and maybe sometimes you gave your full self but then it wasn't appreciated or understood and you had to retreat you had to come back in there's been a lot of you know and when we're looking at Aries and Libra we're looking at do you be yourself or do you suppress you know Ketu in Libra do I have to suppress myself so that I'm acceptable to other people what am I doing? You know, it's like, so there's been a lot of this. There's been a lot of across since March 2022. A lot of, okay, I'm going to be my full self. Oh no, maybe I shouldn't do that. You know, it's like this, this up and down thing. This, am I expanding? Am I coming back in? You know, what do I do? Uh, this has been tough. And this has been really across the board for all signs. But as you've been having this in your second house and you've got people here, you've got family here, the most important people, right? So this is hard. I've got here, were you experimenting with who you are? Um, and, what, and what do you want your role to be in the family? You know, and our roles change in the family as we mature and as we age. You know, if you were the baby of the family, but now you're in your 40s, it's like, well, you know, hang on a minute. I've grown. <laughs> Why doesn't everyone know that? You know, Why doesn't everyone treat me like that? So, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, all this. Now I've got here, when Rahu enters Pisces, you will unfurl even more of who you are and what you are. Your, your time is, is really coming. I do think so. I do think that this um, Rahu key through transit will be really good for you, Pisces, at this time. But I will be having a look at that. Uh, hopefully I will get to write and record that this week. I just haven't had the time lately because there's been a lot going on. I have actually been quite busy. Um, now, those of you who are in Sati Sati, you've just started your Sati Sati. Okay, so this is the Pisces moon people. Yeah, it's a tough time. I know, I know. Sati Sati is not easy. Uh, and it really, I can relate. I feel like I'm going to be qualified to speak about Sati Sati until, I think for me, it's until 2037 because I'm in Saturn Mahadasha. And Saturn Mahadasha, so I was watching one astrologer and he was saying, Oh, if you're in Saturn Mahadasha, that basically is Sati Sati. I was like, oh, great. I'm in it for 20 years. Uh, I've also got a lot of Saturn energy and, you know, I, I know what it's, yeah. My, my, I'll tell you what, my, um, my last three years, 2020 to 2023, that was like a Sati Sati, start of Sati Sati because I was 12th from my ascendant. All right. So I, and, and I was stripped of everything. I packed a bag, I went to Sydney, Australia, and, you know, and I, those of you who watched the channel back then, you would have seen me. You know, I just, I lived out of a suitcase, guys. I didn't have much more than that. I had a handful of colourful jumpers, I had a few tarot decks, and I had a tiny little room uh, in which I both slept and did those monthly reports, if, if you remember. So, you know, I, I lived a very uh, small life. And I let go of absolutely everything for three years. It was hard. I know what start of Sati Sati is. It's hard. You, you can be stripped of everything. And you can be living out of a suitcase. Um, I hope it's not that bad for you, wherever you are, whatever you're going through. But what I will tell you is that I sort of lost everything. I mean, I've come back to everything in you know, my apartment, thankfully. I mean, God, look, everything. I've still got everything. I could have come back here and it could have been emptied because, you know, I did leave the keys with someone I trust and it's all been fine. But, like, I'm a realist as well. You know, I, I think about the case that, well, what if that person isn't trustworthy? And I don't know. And, you know, so anyway, I've come back and everything is as I left it. How fortunate am I? Incredibly fortunate. Um because I had to leave the key, you see, because it's an apartment and other bu buildings, like parts of the building need access because what if there's a pipe damaged or something? You have to leave a key with someone. Anyway, the point is that I wanted to tell you that if you are having this sensation that everything is being stripped from you, this is a very sacred time, okay? When all the material things get stripped from you, you could just look at that and be very sad and, and upset and devastated. You could, you could do that. Or you could turn around and see that God is coming in, like in a big way. So when people are being stripped of the world, of material possessions, of your job, 
of your apartment, of your place, of your things. Here, live out of a suitcase. You have nothing now. This is your life. You know, when, you, when you're going through that and your boyfriends and girlfriends are taking away all your friends and maybe your family as well and every, every, it's all being stripped. That is a time when your life is actually becoming full of God and the universe. And if you are switched on to that and aware of that, a 12th from transit or a beginning of Sarisati or whatever it is, that, that transit can be profound it can be so amazing okay I look back on my 12th from transit and I'm like wow that was a good time I grew spiritually so much uh, and and it forcibly calmed me down on a lot of fronts because I just I had to become okay with not knowing. I had to become okay with going very slowly. I had to become okay with there's nothing I can do. I had to become okay with whatever my life was. And my life did shrink a lot, you know. And, and to top it off, I mean, I was extremely sick as well. Like my, my, I felt like my body was disappearing as well. I, had, I lost a lot of stuff. But, you know, it, 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 I filled up on a lot of God. Okay, and I know that probably sounds cheesy. That probably sounds like something from a Hallmark card, but but that's that's what happened. And Sadi Sati can be an amazing time spiritually. Okay, and this can really be your time. And I'll tell you one of the ways I got through that transit. I got a copy of, I think it's Lester Levinson. I think it's called Happiness is Free. I'll try and find the title. I always forget the title. I've read this book four times at least. But read and reread it. Maybe I've probably read it ten times now if I really think about it. But I've got lots of highlighted bits, and I just keep rereading the highlighted bits a lot. And anyway, I forgot the title, but I remember the wisdom. That's the main thing. But I, I what this is very Saturnian. Okay, you find one book, and you read and reread and read and reread and read and reread until you your cells and your physical body and everything that you are just embodies it, embodies the wisdom. You want to live that wisdom. You don't want to be able to talk about it. You want to live it. So find whatever that book is. I know with Louise Hay, the first time I did this was with Louise Hay lecture. I think it was called Change and Transformation. I might have listened to that. She always talks about like you should do her affirmations 300 times a day. Well, probably over the course of a year. I mean, I probably listened to that one lecture 300 times because I'd listen to it once every day for a very yeah for a long time like when I would come home from work I remember I used to listen to that one it was a one hour lecture it used to take me an hour to get home so I'd listen to that every day just the same thing again and again so find some bit of wisdom that you know I want to embody that I, I, I want to be so good at that wisdom that I just live it Find that thing and you're in a perfect time frame because Sati Sati is actually really, it's, it's quite a profound time, it's quite a beautiful time. And people say it's seven and a half years, do you know, it's more like five years. The first five years of it are tough. When you come over that, when Saturn passes over the moon, when you come over that portion, the next part is going to be okay. You're going to be, you're going to be fine, all right? I know it's hard. I know it's really, really, really hard. Believe me, I really do. Um, yeah, I had, I had a, uh, yeah, my first Saturday Saturday was really bad. I could go into it, but I've taken up too much time already and I, I have to go to sleep as well. That's important too. So guys, uh, let me know how you got on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. This is the kind of thing that you can watch and then, you know, you can come back after the eclipse and just let me know how did it go and, and things like that. Uh, and stay tuned to the channel. I'm going to do Rahu Ketu Shift. It's going to be the next video. As I say, I want to do it this week, but I now have a, a client session come in and I'm busy and a lot of things going on. So uh, let's see how I go. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I can get that done this week as well. All right. Well, take care, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time.